June 11, 2021. Here's another fact about the two witnesses that goes against a trend you may or may not have heard of within the online community uh, of the Christians that are researching these things. It is believed by many that the two witnesses are a romantically involved couple of a male and a female human beings. I once too believed that narrative. But a father took me away from it and showed me, first of all, examples from the past of what it was like before. So examples of two witnesses in other ages. And also showed me why this narrative even exists of male and female couple being the two witnesses, okay? Um, so let's first look at the examples from previous ages, going just to the one age that is pretty much described within the New Testament, to two witnesses there were Jesus and John Baptist. These two were males and cousins yeah so it's a family no romantic relations there then if we go to exodus we see that it's moses and his brother aaron males and brothers Um, right now I can only go to the third example that I'm sure of, and that is around the flood time, the two witnesses back then were Noah and his son Shem, again, two males from a family, right? It was father and a son. Now there are other times that the two witnesses were here but I have to look into it to to give you the the right um the right couples and I haven't looked into it yet so so let's just look at these three examples Jesus and John Moses and Aaron and Noah and Shem uh, Noah and Shem it might not be It might not be exactly obvious from the book of Genesis, but when you turn to the book of Jasher, um, every time Shem is mentioned, Noah is there. Every time Noah is mentioned, Shem is there. They lived together in Salem, and Shem was the king of Salem and the high priest. In Genesis, the high priest and king of Salem is called Melchizedek, Melchizedek is in the name. It's a title. It's a king of righteousness. So here, here you got the righteousness spirit. And Book of Jasher says that Melchizedek was Shem. There's the connection. So Noah and Shem. Yeah. Uh, Moses and Aaron, we all know the story. They didn't grow up together, but they were brothers. Um, Jesus and John Baptist, we all know they were cousins. So it doesn't mean that the two witnesses have to be males. Like, I, I didn't say that. In these examples, they were males and they were from one family. 
There is no space for romantic relationship for them to be a wedded couple or something, a romantically involved couple or whatever. Okay, it it's just not. It's got nothing to do with it. Now, um, as I said in the previous video, there's only one Spirit of God. This Spirit is holy. It's a holy Spirit. Holy, the word in English, is related to your other English word, whole, W-H-O-L-E. So, when you say that something is holy or that the spirit is holy, you're basically saying it's completed within itself. It doesn't lack anything, but also that it is whole. It is entire and broken and damaged with no part removed out of it or healthy, right? So that describes the spirit that is our father. He is whole. So when we're told be holy as your father is holy or as God is holy, it doesn't refer to you acting in one way or another. It refers to you being complete within yourself. That you lack nothing. That you're not missing anything. That you're whole, unbroken, undamaged, okay? When Bible speaks of saints, it's just... Okay, let me do saint etymology. Okay, the word saint in English comes from Latin word sanctus, which again means holy. It's the same thing, different word, right? Saint means Holy. Holy means complete, entire, unbroken, undamaged, in one piece, no part removed, healthy. Why is there such an emphasis on Father Spirit being holy? Now that you know what holy means. Because there is a spirit that is a son of our father. Okay, so there's father, holy father, and he had many sons. And one of these decided to do things his way. Now, just like father is holy, whole, you can't assign a gender to him. Because he's got everything. He's got the male. He's got the female. He's got the feminine, the masculine. Everything's in it. This one particular son, which again doesn't give him a gender. It's just the way to describe an offspring, okay? The spirit decided to separate itself into two parts. Male and female part. This female part does not remember where it came from. Okay? So, the original spirit would have been whole or holy and it divided itself into male and female into what we nowadays recognize as feminine and masculine. So this spirit that used to be whole was from then on into parts 
one that we can see as feminine part and one that we can see as masculine part. And these two parts recognize themselves as their own entities, although they used to be one. We can call these false father for the masculine part or and false wisdom for the feminine part. These used to be originally one entity and this entity was a child of our father. Our father has many children, you included. It is this divided spirit, or better say its masculine part, that claims to be the father of the all. He presents himself to everyone as their maker and is and uh, he's in total opposition to the real father it is interesting to recognize this spirit in some people they claim that everything is theirs they claim that everything here on this earth was made for them and it is theirs. And it is simply the spirit speaking out of them. And the female part is being dominated by the male companion, by the male part of her that she doesn't know they used to be together as one whole entity she does not remember that she believes that they are siblings she believes she is to take orders from him she believes she is to be ruled by him that spirit okay and this is echoed throughout all the ages within the male-female dynamics here on earth. It's problematic because the spirits, the souls that are inside our bodies are genderless. We are what we are. And yet because outwardly we look either as a female or male, there is this dominance of males and it's problematic and it's people even take verses out of the Bible to say that this is how it's meant to be, that the male should dominate the female, but no, your spirit is to rule your own body. That's as far as it goes. But you are not to rule another human being just because they're of a different gender, physically. But anyway, back to the two witnesses. So you got the false father and the false mother who used to be one. And for whatever reason, this is the dynamics that some Christians believe this should be repeated within the two witnesses and they visualize them as male and female where they work together but the male has the upper hand and the female works as a wisdom provider within the couple. It's sick, guys. Some go even as far as going back to Jesus and Mary Magdalene and see them as the couple. Mary Magdalene was a disciple of Jesus. It may not be obvious from the texts that you have available, but if you read some Gnostic texts written by the disciples... <clears throat> you would come to the conclusion that Mary Magdalene was a disciple of Jesus. 
And that's about it. She was a disciple. She was being taught by one of the two witnesses. She was not one of the two witnesses. She was taught by one of the two witnesses. Whoever you are, male or female here, you are complete inside. If you feel incomplete, it is only Father's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that can complete you. You do not need another human being to do this for you. They can't even if they wanted to. When the Bible speaks of marriage or union, Originally, that had nothing to do with union between two people. It was a spiritual condition in which you and the Holy Spirit of Father were united. That is why the Bible speaks of hmm, being unfaithful. Yeah? Again, it has nothing to do with being unfaithful, but like in a worldly marriage. It speaks of somebody loving a different spirit than the one of Father. If you have an idol, you are, you are unfaithful to Father spiritually. If you love something more than Father or His Holy Spirit, you are unfaithful to Him. And that's all it means. The two witnesses are not a couple. And if you approach Father and ask him about it, he will say the very same thing to you. So please, if you disagree with me, go and ask him. I'm just passing on what I've been taught. Now let's look at the pattern of all the witnesses. So I, I did say in some of the previous videos, that the two witnesses are the witnesses of our Father who is holy. So they're witnesses of the Holy Father. And that there are other witnesses to Father. We call them the 144. This pattern comes from the time of Jesus when he sent out the 72 pairs. Right? So 72 pairs <clears throat> that makes 144 individuals, which again is then repeated in Revelation 14. This pattern is being used now in the eighth age, in the eternal age. There is two witnesses, but there is also 144 witnesses to our Father. These are to be witnesses of the whole spirit, right? Of the spirit that is holy. Now the adversarial spirit. Doesn't want these to witness to the holy spirit. They, the adversarial spirit wants them to be witnesses to him. To the, to the divided spirit. Divisions. And so this idea of the 144 being paired has been polluted at one point or another. And now many people believe they are paired with somebody that they are romantically involved with. And there is a structure within these relationships. Uh, it is not pretty. 
one wants to dominate the other and believe they have a right to dominate the other. This is not of our father. And if you are in such situation or feel like you might be in that situation, you go to father. Talk to him openly. The 144 are witnesses to the Holy Father, to the Holy Spirit, not to a divided spirit. If you have a ministry, it's yours, given by your Father. You are to make decisions, and you are responsible for it. If any other person is interjecting themselves into your ministry, no matter who it is, and especially if it is your spouse, partner, you've got a problem because you are repeating the old pattern of the divided spirit, the false father. And the false mother, where one work for the other one. Father tells me that absolutely almost all of the 144 are either going through this or have gone through this. I hope this helps somebody. That'll be all for today.